Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening. So I am continuing on with my series of frogs that I'm painting. Here's the frog I've chosen, this cute uh, black or dark gray frog with some blue striping. Uh, in this painting, I'm going to be using my set of M. Graham paints that I've been using for quite a while now. There we go. I've got that set up in the corner so you can see how I'm going to mix that. Like I said, I've got my frog pre-drawn here. I've, I'll be using some Zen black tulip brushes to paint this frog. And before I go too much further, I should say that the paper that I'm using to paint this frog onto is B paper. It's a 140 pound uh, cotton B paper. And I'm going to start this guy with just a general blue wash. I'm using a bit of turquoise here mixed with, oh, a little bit of cerulean uh, to tone it down just a little bit. And I want to get just a covering on him. Like I said, just doing a first layer of wash. And I'm doing this basically so... Uh, that when I go back and put a top layer on, if I happen to miss a little bit when I go over it, what won't happen is that I'll leave a white line uh, or a white mark underneath where I don't want one. And I'm basically doing everything but the back legs, the I'm sorry, the hind legs and the forelegs in the background. And I'm just blending onto that a little bit. Here we go. I'm going to I come back and I'll do the front leg that's in the foreground and the rear leg that's in the foreground in just a minute. Now I'm mixing up a little color uh, for the dark here and this is a little burnt umber and uh, a little neutral tint, uh, maybe a little bit of Payne's gray in there, a little sepia. I'm just making a nice dark color. I don't have a black on this palette, or I might be tempted to use that, but it doesn't matter. I can mix a really neutral dark with all of these colors, and hopefully it will turn out to be just as dark as I want. So I've got some lines drawn on this frog where his stripes are, or where his stripes aren't, depending on how you look at it, and I just want to follow that a little bit and maybe do what you know a little bit of negative painting around those beautiful blue stripes that this frog has as i said i'm using my zen black tulip paint brushes uh, i've been using these for a little while now trying to get to figure out how much water they hold, how much they don't hold, uh, what's the best way to hold them in my hand. Uh, trying to just basically to work out all the little idiosyncrasies. I feel like I'm going back to uh, my water quite a bit in this, but not too badly. I actually kind of like these brushes. The more I use them, the more they're growing on me. Very much like my silver black velvet brushes. The more I use those, the more they seem to grow on me, and uh, I just continue to use them. I do think, in the end, this brush might have been just a bit big for me to handle on this painting. The frog is not all that large, and this is a number six round brush that I'm using. Maybe just a little big for this, as I said before, but no matter, I'm going to forge ahead with what I'm doing. And even though I didn't paint blue onto this frog's leg, I've altered the black color of the, the body color of this frog just a little bit so that uh, that back leg will stand out from the body just a little bit. We're going to come in and darken all this up anyways. This is just a an early layer of color that's on here. I want to get that on. All right, I'm mixing something up quite a bit darker, and I'm going to put that on the rear 
front leg. How do I say that? The front leg that's furthest away from us. It's in pretty dark shadow, being behind and underneath uh, this frog's body. So I'm just going to drop that on. And I look at the picture, and it's a little bit blue there. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit of blue color, maybe a little bit lighter in here. There we go. I want to lighten that foot up behind the foot in front in case I need to make it darker. So I've got a little light on dark going on. And uh, now I'm just going to go back and start touching up some of my blues to see if uh, that color needs to be punched up a little bit. That initial layer is mostly dry now. It's pretty dry. There we go. You can see the frog. That initial color is pretty, I'm sorry, the initial layer is pretty dry. And I want to punch it up a little bit and make that a bit brighter. Um, I guess his head was just a little bit wet. So I'm going to not continue on with the, the blue there. I'm going to finish up with all of the dark colors on his foreleg. There we go. The rest of that foot and leg is going to be blue. And, of course, he's got some stripes on his rear leg back here. He's going to put a nice bit of color on there. A little bit of more cerulean mixed in there. Now, I, I did use uh, turquoise and cerulean in this. I love the turquoise because it's such a loud, it's, it's such an upfront color. A bold, vibrant color. But I did think, based upon the picture, that maybe it needed to be toned down a little bit. And I think the cerulean helps with that while still keeping the color uh, nice and light. doesn't darken it up a whole lot. just seems to uh, add a little bit of intensity. There we go. And I'm just going to fill in these nice blue stripes on this guy. Here we go. Trying to stay out of the black. If I go over just a bit, I'm not going to sweat it too much, but I'm trying to stay out of it as best I can. And you can see right away this guy is starting to take shape as I darken up that color. Before I put the color on, maybe it matched the picture a little better, but for the frog I'm painting, I thought it needed to be punched up. Like I said, just a really bright bold blue coming off of this guy. I think he's looking better already. All right, I'm just mixing all of some blues in here. There we go. Uh, keeping it nice and light, nice and bright. And I'm going to put this on his front leg, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I've changed my mind. It's hard to remember when I'm doing a voiceover. The order that I painted all of this. So I'm going back in with some darker colors to try to give this frog a little bit of dimension. I'm going to put some dark right underneath his chin and blend that out. Let that, let that smoothly uh, go up and give him, like I said, a bit of dimension to his head. I'm going to do that to his underbody also. And uh, I'm trying to paint around his front arm here. I don't want that to get in what I'm doing. I'm going to come back and touch that up in just a minute. But I need to get the darks underneath this guy's body where it's in shadow. And you can see right away when I drop that darker color in, it forces his front arm there to just pop off of his body. You can see it's standing out a bit more now. And on that rear leg, I'm going to paint around his toes just a little bit. And I'm making sure this blends out really nicely so that I don't get any hard lines. It'll be hard to uh, uh, see any real shape on this frog with a nice hard line. I think frogs are mostly round and pretty smooth. I don't have any hard edges, I don't think. Not any of the frogs I've ever caught uh, growing up anyways. And again, I'm going to darken up just behind his 
back leg behind and in front of his back leg right there to help that to stand out just a little bit. All right, and just adding a bit of dimension to his the top of his head here. I am going to have to go back and do this with the blue also to complete um, the dimensional aspect all the way down his back. A little bit underneath his eye where there's a bit of dark. Blend that out just ever so slightly. There we go. All right, mixing some blues again. Maybe a touch of cobalt in here. And there we go, right along his back. And you can see right there, just blend that out. And all of a sudden, we're coming out with a 3D frog here. There we go. He's starting to look a lot better. Looks much more three-dimensional. Much more like he's ready to hop right off of that page right at us. A little, a little bit more blue. And I can start to put in the color on his front arm. And this is right over the white. Uh, I'm doing this in one layer. I'll probably come back and put just a bit more on here. But uh, basically in one layer, we should be able to see the white through that blue just a little bit better. And uh, the luminosity or brightness of that color should be just a bit better and help to uh, make it seem as though that front leg is a bit closer to us. And right on down, paint those toes. There we go. All right, so I need to get that foot painted in. It is a dark color like the rest of his body. I have a choice. I can really make it light, and uh, I should say make it lighter than the rest of his leg behind him, or I can make it darker. I've made it a bit darker. Hopefully it stands out on its own. I don't think it stood out all that well on the picture, and maybe I should have done a bit more to make it stand out on my image. Uh, but I think it turns out fine in the end. All right. A moment of truth. Painting right around this eye. We're getting ready to give this frog some character. There we go. I'm just outlining this. Blending this out. Getting some dimension to that area of his head. So that when we drop that eye in, it really pops right off the page. And just retouching my work, going back time and time again, trying to get this to look exactly like I want. Trying to work on going back and doing things twice or three times, maybe even four times if I have to, to get the right depth of color that I want, rather than put all that paint on in one big blob and it look a little odd because it's blobby or chalky or or looks a bit odd anyway so I'm <clears throat> just continuing to go over that and over that and over that and a lot of times when you go over it multiple times it adds a bit of depth or dimension the colors are just a bit different here and there and you can notice that as you uh, as you look at the painting so just like his body has dimension, that rear leg has a bit of dimension on it too. And I want to highlight that. And there we go. We've now got a three-dimensional leg in the back. And what you do on the black, you got to do on the blue. There it is. We now have a frog. And that leg now looks like it's leaning right out towards us. Coming along really well. Now the, the blue as it wraps around his underbelly there needs to be just a bit darker just like the black did or the dark color anyways. So I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to that. And that arm again, that front arm 
can't be flat on its own. I know there's a shadow on the bottom part of that. I just need to add it in there. And there it is. My color did get a bit wet. It ran across his arm. That's why you see me scraping that color out. Just dry your brush off if it happens to you. Damp it off. Make it just barely moist and put your brush on it. Most modern brushes will turn into what we call a thirsty brush and soak a lot of that water up. It'll come right out. Okay. Just like under his belly, under his head here, that blue needs to be darkened up just a little bit to match the rest of the, the color on that frog. And as this paint has dried, it's gotten a little lighter than I wanted to. I'm going to add a little bit of color. You see, it looked like a lot of color at the beginning. Now I'm feathering it out. I'm blending it out. It's really not quite as much color there as you think. I just don't want him to look pale or or like not quite there. I want him to look substantial even though he's a little tiny tree frog. I want him to look really good. So we're darkening up these colors. A little shadow underneath those tiny little toes of his. There we go. I think that makes him stand out just a bit more. What else can we do to this guy? We are coming up on the end, only a few minutes to go. The big thing, as you can see, that needs to be done. He's got one big eye there that has not been painted in quite yet. We're gonna get to that. Gonna mix up just a bit of color and here we go. Being careful, I left a highlight. I did paint his whole eye gray, and now I'm leaving a spot. It won't be white, it won't be a bright, bright highlight, but there's gonna be a highlight there nonetheless. A nice dark mixture here. This is as close to black, I believe, as I can make with this palette. And with that, he has gained his personality. There you go. It almost looks like he's looking right at you. Alright. Now I just need to step back and look to see what colors need to be brought up where. Just a little bit. Don't need to do too much to him. But I might need to do a little bit. If I do too much, it'll be fiddling. If I don't do enough, I'm going to feel like I didn't do this little guy justice. There we go. Darkening up that eye. I'm trying to... It's very hard to see, but what I'm trying to do is make the top half of that eye a little bit lighter and the bottom half of that eye just a little bit darker. I don't know that it shows on this video so much, but you can kind of see that in person. He's got a nostril there and a few black spots on him here and there and with that we are almost done hope you enjoyed watching me paint this tree frog if you like it subscribe below stop back to my channel thank you for stopping by this evening we'll see you later thanks so much bye bye